Today we're speaking with AACR President Elizabeth Blackburn. She is the Morris Hurstein Professor of Biology and Physiology in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics at the University of California, San Francisco. And she is, of course, a 2009 Nobel Laureate. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Blackburn. I'm glad, glad to be here. You gave the keynote lecture, Telomere Biology and Cancer. What are the implications of telomeres for cancer prevention? Well, we're starting to find out in uh, many cohort studies that uh, shortness of telomeres, inadequacy of maintenance of telomeres uh, is associated with common diseases of aging and uh, there are some hints from the basic science research done on telomeres that these might include cancer. Knowing the basic science of telomere maintenance and knowing that telomere shortness is a risk factor for a number of common diseases, can we do things to help maintain telomeres better that will in turn affect disease risk in a positive way? Are telomeres in any way a therapeutic target for either chemo prevention or cancer treatment? Yes. For um, chemo prevention, I think that one way we can think about telomeres is that if we can uh, find ways of increasing their maintenance, which may not have to be through pharmacological means but could be through uh, lifestyle or exercise means, could we then see if that will be a way of reducing risk of cancers, as it seems to be a way of reducing risks of other common diseases of aging? Now, conversely, in malignant cancer cells, uh, having good telomere maintenance is, is the um, opposite situation from having good telomere maintenance in normal cells, where we want it to be the case, because that is protective against cancer development. Once cancer cells have undergone their other changes, then if telomerase is active in those cells, it gives them permission to keep on multiplying. And so uh, there are early clinical trials out there looking at whether inhibiting telomerase in cancer cells might be a way of treating cancer. And these are early stage uh, uh, trials going on now. Telomeres have previously been linked with aging and cell division. Can you explain how that process is then linked to cancer? Yes. So if you um, think about what happens to our bodies throughout life, we have to keep regenerating many of our cells. And so cell division has to continue throughout life in, in a great many different parts of our bodies. And, and so maintaining the telomeres is important to be able to keep maintaining cell division. Now, what happens if the telomeres are not adequately maintained is that two things can happen. One is that cells will cease to divide, and that then will uh, prevent things like the immune system from replenishing itself. And the immune system, in its turn, takes care of um, you know, uh, quenching some cancers. And so that's an important part of keeping cancer under control, having a functional immune system. Conversely, if the immune system becomes pro-inflammatory, that also can be um, provoking cancers. And a pro-inflammatory immune system can arise if the immune system gets uh, senescent, which it can do when the telomeres start running down. Now, secondly, if cells have undergone changes which uh, make them less uh, good at their genome surveillance, then when telomeres run down, the cells can start undergoing genomic instabilities, an early stage in cancer development. So that's another way in which uh, cancer development can be promoted by inadequate telomere maintenance in what are early or pre-malignant cells. The Nobel recognized you for the discovery of telomeres. What, in your estimation, remain the unanswered questions in this field? Well, there are many unanswered questions, and they range from very basic uh, understanding of the dynamics of telomeres, how they're constructed and deconstructed throughout the life of a cell, throughout, uh, you know, on the seconds time scales, and even throughout lifetimes. So there are many questions that we still don't know the answers to, although there are uh, great labs working on this, and, and I think that we continue to see progress. And then I think the other fascinating question, as human beings, we're very interested in how does this play out in our lives? And I think we have still a lot of interesting questions about whether telomere maintenance is something that uh, relates to cancer risk, how it relates to cancer risk, and what can we do about it. 
you've mentioned that the main goal of your presidency is to bring increased attention to prevention, and you've coined the phrase cancer interception. How will you utilize that construct to push the prevention field forward, not only among scientists, but also amongst the general public? Well, I think, first of all, cancer prevention is an incredibly important part of the fight against cancer, and AACR's mission is to promote research to combat cancer. And what has been very successful for a number of years has been the understanding of what's driving cancers at the molecular and cellular levels, and this has been um, very important in finding new approaches for therapeutics. What has been learned from this is a lot about the biology that drives cancers very, very early, at the earliest stages, and, and that in turn, I think, can fuel how we can think about preventing cancers in ways that are broader than normally thought of, where sometimes you think of preventing cancer as being as simple as not smoking. Now that is very important, and those behavioral aspects of preventing cancer I think are very important, but the definition is perhaps too narrow. So I like to think of the idea of the more active um, way of combating cancer at earlier and earlier stages as being something we could call cancer interception a term that uh, one of our AACR Foundation members and I discussed as being a term that captures what we hope would be an active, uh, an active way of thinking about uh, preventing cancer. Preventing cancer sounds somewhat passive. Intercepting it, I think, captures the, um, the active way in which the science is, is taking us to uh, new ways that we can combat cancer. So I like the idea that you intercept it before the damage is done, before the full-blown, clinically recognizable, advanced tumor is, is discovered in the clinic. There are ways you can intercept it, and that's based on the growing science of um, cancer biology. Thank you so much, Dr. Blackburn. Thank you.